Welcome to Aromatic Chat, the podcast that introduces you to registered, clinical, and certified aromatherapists around the world. Every other week, my baby girl sits down with a different aromatherapist to learn about their aromatic journey and how they use aromatherapy in their lives and their businesses. Aromatic Chat is produced by Lemon Balm Coaching, and my daughter Melissa is your host. She is a master transformational coach and a registered aromatherapist. Now, I'm probably just a wee bit prejudiced, but I have been greatly impressed by her ability to talk with someone about their condition and or their mental condition or physical condition and come up with a essential oil blend that solves or eases that condition. Uh, I've been a diabetic all my life and my lower legs have always been a problem of dry skin and itching and just driving you nuts sort of problem. And as soon as I explained to her what was going on, she made up a blend of different aromatic uh, essential oils and I've applied it to my legs and lo and behold, the itching stopped, the dryness cleared up and that's the first time in 60 some odd years. Hey friends, welcome to episode number 77, Aromatic Chat with none other than Gabriel Bojé. You are in for a treat. Gabriel is an amazing author, researcher, educator, and practitioner of TCM and aromatic plants and their extracts. Since 1987, he's practiced and taught clinical aromatherapy, herbal medicine, acupuncture, and acupressure. Since 1990, he has been principal of the Institute of Traditional Herbal Medicine and Aromatherapy. He has lectured all over the world, co-authored and authored books. You are going to be so glad you tuned in today to hear Gabriel's aromatic journey. So let's get started. Gabriel, I am so thankful you said yes to being on Aromatic Chat. You know, I've read your book. Thousands of people have read your book. Um, And I'm just really excited for people to get to know you, the guy behind the science, the guy behind uh, the books, the guy behind all of the education. And I'm just really thankful you're here today. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm really delighted, Melissa. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me. And uh, I mean, I think I've been a fan um, kind of remotely and seen um, so many luminaries, you know, you've had. So I feel honored now to get the chance to meet you too, you know, so it's great. Thank you. Uh-oh. Normally I have all it my books, great. but we just moved. So like uh, all my books are somewhere oh, in the middle of the Pacific. I don't Oh, oh, my. oh, I had to, I had my stuff in the middle of the Atlantic for about so you, 10 months. You oh, know, man. the feeling like I, I have all my yeah. books and I love to refer to them and I love to pull them out, especially when I'm interviewing someone and I don't have my book here. Yeah. Oh, healing the spirit. Yeah. Healing the spirit. Um, I won't lie. Some of it was a little bit over my head because I'm not an acupuncturist and you use so much yeah. acupuncture wording in that book. Oh. Your work is in the same realm that I work in, which is healing the emotions, healing people who have, you know, really struggling with that emotional baggage. So I loved reading your book. I have to go back and read it again. I love to read books like yours multiple times because there's so much in them. So I can't wait to go back and read it. But we're not here to talk about my reading list. We're here to talk about Gabriel Mogé. And I would love for you to just start off by sharing your aromatic journey. People know who Gabriel Moget is, but how in the world did you get where you are? Well, I think I, you know, I was lucky because I, from from the very start, in a way, I uh, followed um, the path of natural medicine in a way. I didn't really, you know, have much of a, if any, part prior career per se. I mean, I, you know, I've, I've done 
I did different jobs beforehand, but basically when I, before I went to university, um, I was in Paris for six months. Um, well, principally because I, my my then girlfriend was was there working as an au pair, so it seemed like a good idea. <laughs> but um, I was doing a job and I met a chap who basically, we didn't stop for lunch, but and I was wondering, you know, when we were going to, and he ended up taking me um, later in the afternoon to somewhere called the Bol en Bois in Paris. And it's like a little whole food place, you know, it turned yeah. out to be, you know, they're playing, you know, kind of music I like, Crosby, Stills and Nash. They're, that was like in about 77, 6, 77, yeah. So that was a, that album had just come out. And uh, and then they had a store where, you know, they had weird vegetables like burdock root, <laughs> salsify, which is actually very good for, it's a good alternative herb and <laughs> as well as, you know, good, good kid, kidney uh, food. But there was a book, they had books, of course, and they had a book of macrobiotics, you know, it had yin and yang in it. I saw yin and yang and that was it, I suppose. It was like love at first sight. Became obsessed with it. I became like annoyingly um, fanatic, telling everyone that they shouldn't have, well, yeah, things that, you know, we know aren't good. <laughs> but you don't want to be told all the time not to have too much sugar and whatever red meat and fast food and blah, blah, blah. But I mean, so no, but diet, I, I think, you know, seriously speaking, obviously, I, I still think it's, you know, I'm, 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 it's a foundation. I think we all know that. And I guess I started with that inadvertently. But, you know, aromatics was in there somewhere. Because I mean, all those, you know, a lot of those foods are, you know, and I, I, I go back ginger. I mean, like, one of the key things that Michio Kushi taught for relieving all sorts of aches and pains externally is um and I used to do it on myself ginger compress but you grate all the ginger you know and you make a you know you get a muslim cloth and you, you obviously make like a a poultice and a and a sack and and then you know apply that to or um ask my as I shiatsu patients because that was my first clients with shiatsu because that was the first thing I trained in because that that's very much on has always been connected. Not it stands alone in Japan as a therapy, but it's also right. within macrobiotics. You know, a common uh, a, a kind of you know bodywork intervention. You know, and I ended up actually another book. I apart from the book that I've written so far, <laughs> um, Aromatherapy for Healing the Spirit. The other one I've written that came out in 1990. Um, was Shiatsu, The Complete Guide, you know, mm -hmm. um, which I co-wrote with Chris Jarmy, who sadly passed away because no one realized that he had a congenital heart condition. So I used to teach for his school in the 80s, you know. That's, that was my intro, at least, into natural medicine, you know, TCM and everything. And, I mean, and it kind of set me on that journey. But, I mean, in terms of essential oils, excuse me, it wasn't until... You know, about 80, 1984, I'd say that when I was um, started acupuncture training <laughs> in England, five element. And then, well, I also was lucky because I, at the same time, studied with, um, you know, Giovanni Mashosha, who's really the leading exponent in English. He's written all the main books, you know. You know I used to go and have a bit of treatment with him as well in the late 80s. But so I was studying acupuncture and then um well one thing i did was i i was working have you heard of neil's yard apothecary neil's yard yes Benedict's? i have yes yeah. yeah yeah have you yeah i don't know if they've got any, i mean i think they i had a feeling that they did have a branch branch a few branches here or maybe i'm wrong in the states I, like new york city or something i might be wrong about that but there may be somebody in new york that sells the yeah. products but i'm not yeah. sure yeah. but i, I okay. do know neil's yard yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, at that now they're big in Japan, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're almost like a whole separate company in Japan, actually, really. And they've got like there's there's a they've they've also got their own aromatherapy school in Japan as well, which could be mm -hmm. a leading one, I think. I believe it could be. Well, it was in London, actually, and I mean there was my school and their school, actually. Well, I mean there's other schools, you know, of course, but 
I think ours was both in London and they were both quite in depth. So we used to, you know, in some ways recommend each other because sometimes, I don't know, depending on a person's orientation, mm -hmm. but their program was always similar to the one that Robert ran, Robert Tisser ran, mm -hmm. ran in the 90s as well, because the key people behind it, like Victoria Plum, had trained with Robert. So she put the same st stamp of high standard on of training design on the Neil's Yard course. But back then, all it was was a little shop in 1985. When I was at Neil's Yard, we sold essential oil. So that was my first big exposure. And at the same time, I was also did a two-year course in herbal medicine, Western, herbal, Western herbs, with <laughs> um, a chap named Carlo De Paoli. Um, who was also an osteopath and acupuncturist, you know. He was actually um he was actually principal of an osteopathic college, the Andrews Taylor Still College of Osteopathy, you know, in, in, in England. And he ran a course for two years at the East West Centre in London, which was like where all the macrobiotics was happening. And um yeah, so that um, you know, and then part of that, we would, you know, part one thing I realized even recently by collecting, I've got, I've been collecting lots of images of, our, of plants, medicinal plants, uh, you know, essential oil plants, mm -hmm. like through Adobe stock. And then I've got some of my own, but taken here and there. But I mean, I've got two folders and I've got about, I don't know, three or 4,000 in each, one being aromatic and the other being just not aromatic, just regular medicinal. And that mm -hmm. goes to show you the proportion. I mean, maybe I, maybe I went to town a little bit more on the aromatic ones, admittedly. But honestly, I also, you know, if it was an important medicinal plant, I would get like six images or ten images of each. So overall, I was surprised to see. I think you know, the number of medicinal plants that are used by like herbalists that are aromatic. I mean, really, they're approaching half in many cases. Maybe not so much in the Chinese tradition, but in the Western one and European, I would say so, you know. So that's how important all that aromatics is, really. And we were already looking at that as part of the herbal. But then he also, we started aromatherapy training. And then I kind of took over the school for different reasons, including his health. But I mean, sadly, but I mean um from 1990 and you know that's the my school being the institute of traditional herbal medicine and aromatherapy well mm -hmm. i mean it's not it's not a business entity anymore in the uk was it was it did get this business approval to be called an institute like in 1996 but it's just at the moment it's kind of just me <laughs> but right. i mean in the sense that but i've got you know i've got a, i've got faculty previously who you know are there i can put together so i am looking you know to um yeah i'm looking in that kind of direction but mm -hmm. one where her where where herbal medicine is also kind of in there as part of the training because well for different reasons i can go into later but but that that's mainly my that hopefully kind of gives you an idea of you know where how the path it took me i suppose you could say from the time that i discovered macrobiotics to like when i really got into essential oils because i was like you know working in the store mm -hmm. and you know when you take you know you get a discount on their purchase and people would come <laughs> in and so you'd end up recommending you know i was doing this course i mean only slowly slowly it wasn't until we did the proper course on aromatherapy oh and then of course then the big, the two famous people from France came over, Daniel Penwell. Have you had him on the show, Dr. Penwell? I have not. <laughs> I have not. He's very <clears throat> passionate, you know, and, and he's with Pierre Francom, who's also, you know, Pierre, I think, is extremely serious, you know, about his work and his research. I think for many years now, he's been employed, I believe, by Estee Lauder. You know, he's mm. uh, doing research, I think. Anyway, so, I mean, but they came over and this was, a. I think this was on the second time they came because Michael Scholes told me he organized the first one. <laughs> so they came over and did this scientific aromatherapy, you know, course. I think they, 
I think it was like they came over, wow, three times. I can't believe it. These days when you think, you know, we all have to Zoom everything. They actually came in person to mm -hmm. London on three occasions and did three whole days, you know, each wow. time. So that was cool, you know. And and the, the book that they came out with at the time, of course, which became the classic of what we might call the French school is L'Aromatherapie Exactement, you know, so it's still in French. No one... But I mean, a lot of it's decipherable because it's technical French, you know, right. it's not, you know. Right. Um, and so, um, yeah, um, so that that gave me the other perspective. Yeah, what was I going to say? Yeah, back then in that book, it's there's a lot of chemistry, but there wasn't much research compared to now. I mean, right. now, the last five or 10 years, there's been a flood on PubMed you can access, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so, but back then it was just, yeah. And well, anyway, there's other things I could start getting into with that, but I won't <laughs> like functional group theory and stuff. And have, you've yeah, we're not here to talk you? about the science. We're just here to talk about uh, you. No. <laughs> have you had Robert? I have not. I did talk to Hannah oh, okay. and I told her, I said, Robert's day is coming, but I wanted to talk to Hannah <laughs> first because she's the face right. of the Institute. So definitely wanted to talk to Hannah first. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's yeah. great as well. She's very knowledgeable. Yeah. So I love talking to um, people who have been doing aromatherapy as long as you have. It just uh, are vintage aromatherapists. And um, if I really just... think about it now, so it's think about it's funny that because I think what in terms of the provenance of this. I do see it as a branch of plant medicine. Mm -hmm. And that's actually one reason, what's one inspiration behind a, a, a conference I'm, I'm organizing in Longmont um, in Colorado, you know, together with Laura Cantelli, you know, next year yes. in May. Yes. She's, she's getting the yeah. date together. And because we're, we've got people, you know, from across the spectrum of plant medicine and, um, yeah, uh, but when I think about the origin, it's sort of like, for example, I think it's got different dimensions to it when I think about it now. If I think about it now, I don't think you can pin it down to one thing. It's got provenance in, in you know, in ethnobotanically speaking, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got Anne Armbrecht who's going to talk about her work in Nepal. And she is the... Um, She's in charge of the sustainable um, herb project for the American Botanical Council. And she's what she's written this award winning book, The Business of Botanicals. Oh, very nice. Know, which is exploring the healing promise of plant medicine in a global industry. It's very much to do with sustainability of what we use as well. I mean, but that intersects with that, which is a very, you know, contemporary concern. But her, her, you know, being Nepal and then also the African roots with Dr. Omi, for example. I mean, you know, like aromatherapy, it does go back to ancient Egypt. And, you know, to me, yes. whenever aromatics are used, that's aromatherapy, you know. But on the other hand, I don't think it is now in terms of actually using the volatile extracts themselves. No, that has to have some industrial that did really that do you know what basically it's like the steam engine i mean yeah it had its roots i, I you know paracelsus or well like M maria belgiani has been able to show you know we've got very you know the beginnings of distillation in ancient crete and that's about 18 1800 bc or something so you know th those are archaeological origins as well so it's almost like you've got the anthropological, ethnobotanical origins, you've got the archaeological origins, and then you've got you've got the industrial origins, which are which the way that distillation was properly developed in the Industrial Revolution. So look at Thompson, the American herbalist. If you look at their herbals, they're telling people to use essential oils internally, externally. It's aromatherapy. It's actually aromatic medicine, but they just didn't call it that. Right. Gattafoss did. But somebody was already doing what Gattafoss was doing. 
and right. it was they were doing it in the latter part of the 19th century in the United States, right. you know. So, but I think that that's not to discredit, and you know, at all, it's not because it's important when people also develop the ontology of a discipline. You can do the meaning of it, the significance of it, the parameters of it, and also the limits of it. And that's where Robert Tisserand comes in. Yes. When you define the limits of a discipline, you empower it because then other people can trust it. You know, that's important. And we can trust the limits of it. We know how far to take it before it becomes what Paracelsus warned us it would be. It's no longer hormetic. You know, hormetic is the, that's in nature. That's something I've been studying as well. Hormetic, the hormesis is that action. That's the epigenetic action of plants. That's the action on, on our genetic system that mm. are, that's the, that's the way that these secondary metabolites in nature stimulate our, uh, an, uh, an epigenetic response, which is greater than the sum, than what can possibly be you know delivered by the actual chemistry of the plant it's greater than that it's it's been shown to be in research because it stimulates you know these immune factors uh within us you know so um uh and i've been looking at that very and protecting also very crucially and i think the most important role of all of these compounds that we, you know, manifest in essential oils and aromatic plants, which is to protect our mm -hmm. DNA. I truly believe this is the most crucial thing from my study. Sandalwood itself has taught me from all the studies and they do that. One of the ways they do that in a multiplicity of ways. And one very important, fascinating way is that they encourage something called apoptosis in the cells and apoptosis is that natural cycle of growth and death, which, by the way, when you lose it, that's what pro proliferation is. That's why many of the compounds in the essential oils are called anti-proliferative because they prevent that. So that's me. I'm, I'm about this passion I have for understanding this and telling people even beyond the antibacterial, antiviral. However, it depends where you live. If you live in the third world, where you're co constantly challenged by that, you want tea tree, you want that action. Right. Of course, right. you're going to get the be all the benefits the same time anyway. So it's not either or. I'm just saying those activities in particular, I would say, you know, or you could make, by the way, and then, you know, you mentioned the importance of the psychological. I think that that's almost a separate consideration because then right. there's their anxiolytic bits. And I think psychologically, even more than important than anything, I think even more important than their antidepressive functions, I would say, is their ability to soothe and comfort, you know, it's anx anxiolytic. But anyway, so. Before <laughs> you even said the word, before you even said the word, I was going to say... Yeah. I think the word for you is passion. Honestly, oh, right. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, we hear your voice and it's soothing and it's comforting, but then, oh. but then Gabriel starts talking and he starts talking <laughs> about all of these things that are flying through his brain and the passion emerges and wow, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. For I thought sharing. I would get right down. I thought I thought I would get right down to it this time because those are the topics that I always wait and wait and wait to talk about. So I just thought I'd kind of come in with a nail them first. Well, not and first, this is the, this know. is the perfect opportunity to do that because this this podcast is about yeah. you and and passion oh, is part of who you are. So yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, question but, yeah, for you: yeah. Who inspires you yeah. and why? musically someone asked who i liked and i this is typical of me i went into my itunes and gave them a whole massive list of like 500 artists <laughs> but i did out of those choose about 10 that i thought were you know my biggest influences and that's similar i would say the people i've lined up to colorado next may but there's still you know there's a whole bunch of people of course especially in the aromatic world but i i guess you know i mean I mentioned already, you know, having studied with um, with Dr. Penwell and, and Pierre Francom, 
you don't really want to, I don't want to make a huge long list and it would be easy to do that. And I've already, you know, mentioned the importance of Robert's work from his book. It was a great blessing to spend time and studying with Dietrich Wagner, Dr. Dietrich Wagner, who I had the uh, opportunity to study with in 1993 as part of a course given by Natural Oils Research Association under Bernie Heffron mm -hmm. in the UK. I want to mention them both because they've since passed away more recently. He was very passionate about aromatherapy and he was an expert in the chemistry. Of course, he was a, you know, chemistry, uh, a doctor of chemistry, uh, taught chemistry his whole life. He was also an expert in, in, in um, I remember, beers and wine. <laughs> He won, he did some he did some really an innovative research, amazing stuff. And like one thing he did was he took oil, he took some essential oils and, for, and diffusing them in art school to see the effect on people's artwork. Mm -hmm. You know. And um and he, he left me. I've got I've still got um, in my, when I think about it, I'm gonna cry, but I mean I've I've got these slides that he used to show. He left them with me. Um, he, there must be copies, I'm sure. But I mean, he left me these uh, slides where you can see the before and after, you know, of the diffusing, especially it seemed Harry, what the, the ones that you might imagine that would have that kind of, you know, liberating creative effect, in particular, Jasmine and, you know, Clary Sage, you know. So anyway, so he was, a, you know, he was he was someone, who, um, a big influence. Rhiannon Lewis uh, you know, very much. Um, I think I was had the opportunity to host her uh, first advanced clinical aromatherapy trainings in London in 1998. And I think that really put it, gave a much better foundation to that more, you know, aromatic medicine tradition of aromatherapy, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about, she was telling me about her plans for ICANN some years ago, actually. I've got this private joke, really. I mean, but it, there's some truth in it. I've got to tell you there's some truth in it. In terms of general, broad knowledge of clinical aromatherapy, science-based, evidence-based, research-based, hands-on clinical application, and especially in terms of its integrated application, you know, especially, especially, obviously, you know, cancer care and palliative care, right. basically, you know, there's Rhiannon and there's everyone else. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. to some extent, I don't think it's quite the same in some other disciplines, but there are just some disciplines where you've got someone who really, and it's not just because they're, it's, in her case, it's not, especially not because, you know, she blows her own trumpet or she's right. Absolutely. Kind of famous in a normal way. It's because she really, really knows her stuff. She's been a nurse she knows what's it, but she's and and she's just incredibly bright. <laughs> yeah. We're we're lucky to have someone who's just so incredibly brilliant and humble. Blessings to to Re and then Ariane and, and Peter Holmes as well. I would say from more of a TCM herbal perspective, you know. So his book, uh, the Energetics of Western Herbs, which also again had a lot of essential oil stuff in it, actually a lot, a lot, a lot. I'd be surprised. But I mean, I think so those, you know, those individuals, I think, are, are stand out. But these days, because I'm especially focused in plant medicine generally, you know, it's people like uh, the books I've got here, like those of, you know, Michael Heinrich, Heinrich or Kerry Bone or Gillian Stansbury, Lisa Gonora, who I'm actually doing a course with and all the different chemical constituents. I mean, of the chemical constituents of you know plants generally, including the including essential oil. What are you working on right now that's got you really excited? I mean, I have been busy um, with prepare with different uh, presentations for you know, yes, um, two different aroma summits. Even later today, I've got to you know I finally getting got got the, the slides ready to film myself for a video to give for the International Herb Symposium. Now that one's in June. I'll do like a, you know, a, a, a kind of natural perfumery essential oil blending workshop. And then Autumn and I will do like a, a herb walk. 
I'm collecting these. I used to call it, well, they're like aromatic sonnets or odes to rosemary or chamomile. I'm building. So I'll read a couple of those. So I've got the conferences happening. And then also I've got a couple of short courses coming up. I'm doing with Laura Cantelli. Uh, one I'm doing in July. No, I'm doing that hosted by her and, and the International Journal of mm -hmm. Professional Holistic Aromatherapy. Yeah, so I'm doing one on this concept of aromatic herbalism. We do about a dozen different major aromatics like chamomile, rosemary, frankincense, and angelica. And look at, now the cool thing is that what you'll you'll learn about how to use them as herbs as well, you know, as well as we'll review everything about the pharmacology. Beautiful. Because that's my big, the big thing with me is that I'm working on. And so that's going to be the theme of my new book is what I call something I called pharmacoenergetics, like the pharmacoenergetics of essential oils and medicinal plants. Now, what I know that sounds weird, but the more it does, if I explain what pharmacoenergetics means, it's kind of simple in a way. Uh, I think I was saying how I was, the more that I really looked at, you know, the spirit, spectrum of research you see a lot of the time obviously the antioxidant anti-inflammatory properties and there's many associated activities which through being able to donate electron and hydrogen atom you know and therefore have very potent anti-radical absorption capacity i mean more than any other thing in any other uh, substance in nature, you know, herbs and spices, the herbs, the aromatic ones that we also use as essential oils. I've really did gone to town on something, you know, diffusion aromatherapy as well. I was giving special training in that last year. So then applying that all to this concept that if we understand the pharmacology, at the same time, we can it's interesting to also look at the pharmacology, even just from a yin yang point of view. And that's what it is. That's all it is. It's like the yin yang of the pharmacology. Just to explain that very, very briefly as an example, like even Penwell and Francom, some of the oils are so antibacterial. And that's a very yang thing. Mm -hmm. And so is being able to protect you. Protection is also very yang to protect your you know, DNA from if you have herbs and spices every day, you get all that antioxidant benefits because it's the free radicals that damage the tissue and, and the brain cells and cause dementia. That's a very big part of it. And having the aromatics, even through aromatherapy, protects us from that and keep, and it's really, you know, in that way, I'm also interested in the psychological, spiritual side, but also that kind of, I know it sounds funny, but longevity, you know, and, and be, keeping a, a clear mind going into your later life, you know, is very important. And sure. then also, but they also have this beautiful yin quality, of course, which is, again, through their ability to give you comfort and relaxation, which, of course, is their spiritual nature, you know. Right. So, I mean, I'm doing these conferences. I've got another class coming up in olfactory therapeutics in October with Laura. I'm doing also... One um, and both Denise Kuzak is having an input in both in both of those. She's a, a friend of mine who's a herbalist who was most recently president of the American Herbalist Guild. She's also executive director of Herbalists Without Borders. So mm. she's helping me in both those classes. And then Shelley and Teen, she we're together. We're doing a, a psychological and medical astrology of essential oils. And that's also so all three of those are going to be run through the uh, Laura and her website, the ijpha.com website. And then we also, with Laura, this very big conference you'll see coming up three day or two and a half days, I think next May at Longmont Museum. I'm hoping that, to, I won't mention any names, but a very big name special guest, I'm hoping, at least one. And But we've also got a, a luminary stars of many others, including, for example, Dr. Marion Revan, um, Veronica uh, Easterly Thomas, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Jesse Hawkins as well. 
you know so um and and some really important people and in the in the herbal field including susan leopold who's the executive director of united plant savers and 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 armbrecht and i could go on you know so yeah. some really you know great thomas so as well and that's happening and then you know as i say i'm looking to you know towards my school and for next year and you know in, in terms of a longer t one year training that would integrate um aromatherapy together with um, herbal medicine you have shared so yeah. much um and all of the things that you have coming up is there one location where people can find the information about all of the things that you have coming up well, probably Facebook, I have to admit, but at okay. the moment, because I'm just at a moment where uh, the next thing I need to do, it sounds like it's fundamental, but like the next thing I do need to do is set up, is revamp my website. And that's aromatherapy-studies.com. But I haven't quite done that yet. So probably the most contemporary source of information is probably Facebook and Instagram, or, or Facebook more so. Okay. Um, but um, or and for my classes, the website of Laura, where where people can book for those classes I mentioned on aromatic herbalism, olfactory therapeutics, and medical astrology of essential oils. So that's the website of Laura's journal, which is the ijpha.com. Come to my website. You can join my mailing list, and I'll send you information when my book is finally out. Okay. <laughs> my new one. Awesome. So yeah. I'll include all of those links in the yeah. show notes so that people can easily find the courses through IJPHA, uh, your school website, and yeah. then your Facebook. So that if people wanted to reach out to you, they yeah. could. As we close out, I just want to give you the final word, the final moments. Anything yeah. that you want to share, anything that you feel like we might have missed, any inspiring words, whatever it is, this is for you. I think it's about, well, first of all, I want to say thank you, Melissa. You know, it's been really great. You know, you are, I've seen you do some interviewing on Facebook as well, you know, of Rhiannon and people and, you know, and I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. It's so refreshing to share with someone who's so receptive. But I think nature, you know, is like my guide, you know, and actually talking about Rhiannon again, she'd like, did you choose the oils or did they choose you? You know, I like to think that the plants chose us, you know, the people who are like the devotees of the, and, and also I think, you know, part of that, we need uh, looking to the future and this conference is also has a future dimension. How can we also keep, you know, keep our precious plants in place and preserve them for the future, you know? So sustainability and regeneration, and that's been another inspiration I've got from Denise, and that's why I've asked her to contribute, because she's also very conscious about sustainability, regeneration, and also even topics like health justice and so forth. But because 80% of the world is already using plants, so I think the more information we can provide about their safe use and using local ones, not always having to import them across the world because they're everywhere we look and planting them. You know, I think it's all part of it. So I want to celebrate aromatherapy as something quite big. You know, I've got a big vision of what it is, and I still say it's aromatherapy. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much, Gabriel. I have enjoyed Good. sitting with you Thank today you. and hearing about everything that you're doing and your passion. Oh, my right. gosh. The passion well, definitely well, shines well, through. No, thank you. Thanks, Thank Melissa. You. You've brought you've drawn it out of me. So I think it's in you oh. too. <laughs> Good. Awesome. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Take care. All right. Okay. Passion. Could you hear Gabriel's intense enthusiasm as he spoke about all things aromatic? I have sat through workshops taught by Gabriel, and in every single one, the passion is what shines through. Would that we could all have that level of passion in our lives. You know, I have to admit, I'm a little envious of people like Gabriel who have been living in their passion for so long. I thought I knew what my passion was when I joined the military at 18. Then I thought I knew what it was when I decided to stay home and raise my family. Don't get me wrong, that was the most rewarding and important decision of my young life. 
But it wasn't until just a few years ago, after I became an aromatherapist and started working with clients, that I really, truly, and honestly discovered my passion. It wasn't until I had gone back into the workforce and started discovering the things that inspired me and got me excited. The funny part is, when I told my oldest son that my passion is helping people succeed, he said, well, duh, mom, it's always been that. You know, it caught me off guard that he could see it, but I couldn't. But then I started looking back at all the things I've done in my life, and yep, he was right. My passion was always there. I just wasn't aware of it. I think it's absolutely fabulous that I'm now living in my passion. As a life coach, I have the privilege of walking beside my clients and helping them realize their passions, their excitement, their inspiration. Wow, Gabriel, thank you for showing us your passion today on Aromatic Chat. I hope that you, listener, know your passion and have the joy of living in it. If not, that is quite literally why I'm here. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Gabriel Moget. I'll include all the links mentioned in today's episode in the show notes. Every time you listen, share, and review the podcast, you're supporting the mission of Aromatic Chat to connect you with the aromatherapist that meets your wellness needs. Aromatic Chat is produced by Lemon Balm Coaching. I'm your host, Melissa, Master Transformational Coach and Registered Aromatherapist. My passion is working with people who are emotionally numb. I walk beside them as they reconnect mind, body, and spirit so that they can heal. You can connect with me on the web at lemonbalmcoaching.com and Instagram at lemonbalmcoaching. I will see you next time with our next episode. Until then, peace, love, and aromatics.